Surviving storms. Surviving storm. Surviving storm. I'm Rhoda, Rhoda James from Lubia. So, can you tell us a bit about Lubia? Lubia, pretty much a very quiet community. Over the years, we've been expanding a bit. But before, let us just say about 15 years ago, it just used to be Lubia with Madrell, Four Bower, and T Canal, Laudut. But now we've expanded. We, we have Everton Estate. We have um, Upper Fobawa Tranquility Estate. We have Wall House. We branch out into Castle Comfort as well. And um, Lubia extends from the Macmillan gas station the, just after the bridge up until the quarry and all the way just above the old Kubuli factory. So that's basically Lubia for you. But otherwise, quiet community. A little bit of activity, nightlife, you know. Lately there we have Green Supermarket, which is about 11 years in, in and, and going, yes. And um, other than that, that's Lubia for you, yes. How is Lubia different from other places in Dominica? Um, let's see. Well, our people for one, if you call, like you want assistance, you bet you're going to get help from no matter who it is you call, you know, and they, our people are always quick to respond, to want to help one another for, sh for one, and um, the community spirit, although sometimes you find it can be lagging, but when you, you do make a movement in Lubia, you do make something happen in Lubia, you find that people come together to help. So that's one of the strong things about people in Lubia in particular. How has the village changed since Erica? Well, I experienced Erica, and at the time I lived lower down because Lubia has two rivers, and I lived by one of the rivers. I always used to say the river and the sea that were my neighbors because I always like peace and quiet. I like peace and quiet, you know. But the time of Erica, I was living down by the first river in coming into Lubia. And we woke up the early morning and we, we heard the rivers, all the rumbling, all the rains. And by the time it was like 5.30, we saw how the river was really swelling and coming up onto the roads. And so, so we had to make our escape from where we were living because we were living on the, on the western side of the bridge. Yeah? So we had to really move. We saw the devastation that took place um, with Erica. It really transformed it a bit in terms of our playing field. Um, the, the Catholic Church, all the, the, the yard was inundated with um, water and boulders, you know, even the roads, my apartment got flooded out and uh, the neighbors along the, along the road next to me, they too, they got flooded out. The storm really transformed Lubia, not, not really devastatingly, but we had our challenges. We saw some persons lost their livelihoods because we had fishermen, their boats were damaged. And um, we had little infrastructural damages in terms of homes. Some homes got inundated with water, as I said. And um, it took a little while for that to be sorted out. But besides that, we survived um, Erica. Okay. So how did Maria affect the community? Oh, well, this one, we know that Maria was a terrible lady. <laughs> know that uh, um, we saw the extent of the devastation on the, the whole island but concentrating on Lubia as I said I still lived down on the bay and the Saturday before Maria I packed up because you know you always have to prepare during the hurricane season you pack your go bag so we took our essentials and then we moved up with some friends further up in the, in the, in the village and oh boy just going back to Maria is just something else you know and um, I, just recently I was going through some photos that I took before Maria and to see how green and beautiful it was and then a couple of days after Maria taking the photos it was just 
It was a lot. It was too much. It was really a lot because you could see the extent of the devastation in our community. It was hard. It was very hard to look at. And um, when you, you, you knew your community and then one day it was so nice, so green, everything was in place. And then 24 hours after that, you could not recognize certain, certain areas. Just imagine somewhere where it took you from, say, just below Kubuli factory to, to the bridge in Fobawa, it would take you probably about 10, 15 minutes. It took us almost two hours just to cross over. And when you get to the bridge, the bridge was washed out. And then you could not, oh, it was really hard. It was terrible. Maria really took its toll on us, you know. Mm -hmm. Transformed our village, really. Because when you look at, we no longer have our Kubuli factory, which, which, which was our main bottling plant for water and beers. So that is still in ruins. When you look at certain parts of our community itself, uh, even where I, I, I am living now, mm -hmm. the, the river had gutted out the road and had left the people living further up stranded. So they had, they, they had no way of getting to, no access to their homes if they did not pass in the riverbed itself. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, some of the, some of the, um, the homes some of them are still in ruins, mm -hmm. you know? So we, we also have a nice little spot called Spiders. That was the buzz on a weekend. Everybody came there for their fish pies, you know? And now it's still in, it's still in ruins. Though he's building back, but it, it's, it's, it's taken a while. Some persons, it will take them a long, long while to get over that. And some people are just going on. You know, after you survived a storm like Maria, you would not have a choice but to just move on. Some persons, it did take a toll on them because we heard that some persons, when they realized that they lost everything, they could not cope, you know? I know we lost some lives because um, it just became too hard to go on and some people just gave up. But um, as we say, you know, the strong always survive and we saw people Despite the devastation, despite the lack of everything, some persons lose their entire livelihood, their homes, their jobs too. But you just had to go on. So for those who could fix their homes, we saw that they did that. And though who found shelter with friends and families, though they, it was not as comfortable as living in your own space, but they did what they had to do to cope and to go on day by day until they could get up on their own two feet, you know? But it was hard, it was hard. For a lot of us, it is still difficult. Even just thinking about it, just speaking about it, it is still hard. And knowing where you were to where you are now, or what you've lost and what you could have accomplished, you know, but life goes on. Yeah. What did you do during the night? prep your mind saying that there was no light oh. <laughs> Maria came with a bang because all during the day it was good though we had little rains and stuff it was good but as soon as 8 o'clock hit bang on the dot the lights went and the winds started and it started and it grew in strength and it was difficult because you see with me, I have always kept a positive on, uh, on everything. And uh, though it was terrifying, I didn't let the fear get the better of me. I knew how to pray. I knew how to speak to Jehovah. So I called on him to give us peace of mind and to help us to cope, to get through it. It was difficult because you could hear the raging um, wind out there and the crashing of, of um, missiles and galvanized and everything else against the windows. You could hear the bashing of the windows in, then the wind in the house. You could feel the, 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 the building trembling and everything like that. And that is enough to scare somebody, enough to, to, to make you probably want to give up. But when you can find solace and you can find peace of mind in, in, in adversity, you try your best. So with all of that, 
you put on survival mode, so to speak. <laughs> and um, imagine during the, the, the storm, we were in a little alley in the house and uh, the bathroom door and the bedroom door were side by side. And the alley is in between the two doors. And we had um, electric um, drill and screws trying to keep the doors down, keep the doors together because the roaring of the wind, because by that time it had already taken the back door. So it had all the wind gushing into the house and we were trying to screw down these doors just to find that a little bit of safety between the, the, the walls of the two doors. So it was really something else. But um, as I said, you just have to keep your head up and um, continue because you wanted to survive to see what to see the next day. You know? After the hurricane, mm -hmm. did you or the community partake in activities like playing dominoes together? Um, but it would have to be a long while after the hurricane because immediate, immediately after the hurricane you find persons wanted to, to find out the whereabouts of their family, especially if they were separated. I, for one, I lived on my own, but I have my, the village is full of my families. Mm -hmm. And even when it took me about three or four days to come down from where I was. And when I came, the bridge was washed away, so there was no way I could cross. But just looking at where my family lived, which was across the river, and then my sister's house was no more, my cousin's house was no more, and I could see my aunt's house. But there was no way I could cross because the river was still raging. It had that fear in you, what really happened, because you had no idea what happened to your family, you know? But as the days went by and time went by, the village did come back together because especially the people that were living in the resource center, some of them stayed there for months. So you would know they would have they would have built a little bond, get a little togetherness, you know. So I guess by that time domino activities was taking place and other other essentials, you know, just to keep their minds occupied, you know, away from the devastation that just took place a few weeks before. Mm -hmm. So I know that the community was already united people. Mm -hmm. so, was it even more united after the hurricane? I believe so. Because you saw persons were looking out for each other um, in terms of um, sh where, where there was shortage of ex especially water. Because I remember one young lady said to me, when she, she, she never knew that person was my dad. But when she found out, she said he was so helpful to them because he was the one getting them water. While, you know, the community was in so much turmoil because you, it's like I said, you, you, you had no idea where to turn, how to start. Where were you going to, 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 to start to re probably rebuild? Or, you know, you figuring out where, where to get food, where to get water. Because, you know, everything would be coming on you at once. And all these emotions, you know, so some people mm, had no idea where to turn. But you really saw the community come back together because... For example, we have, we have water sources in Lubie, apart from Dowasco, and you would find if somebody had a vehicle, then they would take somebody else's water container to go get it filled for them and take it back to their homes for them. So you really see the community came together to help each other out during that time. Was there anything that you learned from the hmm. for, for sure, it taught me a lot, but it taught me a very important um, lesson in that in everything in every adversity we cannot forget that there's a creator that we have to call on him so that he can help us to get through these difficult times and not do not place emphasis on material things life is so much more precious where you saw we lost because I think we lost about 11 or more lives in Lubia you know and for one guy in particular we lost a lot of young people, but we had that young guy, Cleve, Cleve Lebla, and there was nobody that he did not help in the community. So just losing him during Maria, because he was trying to help another young person that the river was carrying away, and he herself got washed away in that. So he is one that we really miss, because you could have counted on him to help you in anything, and he would not say no. So it was difficult, but lessons learned and good lessons at that. Mm -hmm. What are your future hopes for the village? We have a number of things I would like to see 
um, addressed in the community. For example, where I'm living now, the community has come together and we're rehabilitating our road. That was one of the roads that the river actually took after Maria. So every Saturday we come together, we cook for the community and the, 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 the men in, in, in the community, they come together and we do a piece of road. It's been off for a couple of weeks because of lack of material, but that is one of our aims. So to see that part of the community develop, we have our playing field that has been sitting for a few years now in rains and Maria just made it worse. Um, the, the village council is trying their best to see how they go about getting it on par, but um, it will take a lot. So our young people, have, we love our playing field because that's where we, we used to have all our activities. So for me, our, our playing field is the main, um, the main area in the community that I would like to see get back to where it used to be or even better than that. And, and, and debris that the river and the road made one. So we, we used to put planks and walk, walk over and then all the mess between the two rivers because remember the two rivers kind of collided and uh, all that muck and, and, and big logs. You saw logs? Oh, and to be to be going through that for me it took me a while to actually accept it mm -hmm. and uh, one of my getaway as I said to you was going to Guadeloupe mm -hmm. because I saw what Erica did and I saw how it affected me emotionally and I didn't want Maria to have that same effect on me so probably every two months or so we would just escape and go visit my mom in Guadeloupe mm -hmm. stay for a while and then come back and it felt good because even after after Maria, the the mosquitoes so <laughs> people could not cope, and there was no no um, mosquito coils or anything like that. Mm. But for me, I was able to go go to Guadeloupe, get a few mosquito bats, you know, get the nets to put on on the door, the magnetic nets, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, just live a little better than than some. But you had to do something for your comfort, you know. But mm. It's just that the lives we lost because right there we lost a lady. The the landslide came and she got trapped, and her family could not get her out. So I think mm -hmm. after that she suffered a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Even not too long ago, I was talking to her her grandson, and he told me, "You know that we buried her. We had to bury her right there. So so she was buried. In the yard. She is buried here in the yard mm -hmm. there because." At the time the officers came and thought she was she began to decompose. Mm -hmm. So they just had to just dig a hole and bury her there. Mm -hmm. And then we lost a six month old baby just down the road. Mm -hmm. Yes. They the the river by the time the river came and they, they were on that side. Um it just became too much so it really kept, became too much. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because the mother had, I think, a two-year-old and a baby, and uh, like the river just came into the house. So time she grabbed, the baby slid out of her hand, and time she tried to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> losing Jal, losing Myrtle and Moya, and it's like coming to the reality of it. That was the hardest part because you just mm -hmm. expect. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because we spoke about him, yes. Right. And you know that he was one of the persons. You just call on him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and to see that he lost his life trying to help. Mm -hmm. You know? So. Mm -hmm. And even after everything subsided, and then they... I remember when we were... That was the day that I came down into the village. Actually, probably it was about maybe four or five days after, after Maria. And I came down into the village. That was the first time going down there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because I came down, and when I reached there, remember, I still had my injury, and the oh, river was still oh, raging, so I did not want to take the chance and cross and probably hurt myself further. So we waited a couple of days, and then we went down. And um, while we were down by me, in coming up, Edmund came and Edmund said that they found their Cairo. Mm. That was a hard one. That was very hard. <laughs> Mm. That was rough, man. Mm -hmm. So I can understand how Sylvester was feeling, you know? Because a few years after that, I lost my dad, so it just helps you to see how another person can grieve, you know, when something like that happened. And he did not lose one, he lost two children that time. It was hard for him. 
and, and, and what still irks me is that he, he's still being sidelined in everything that's happening in the community, everything. Knowing that he lost two children, I, I'm not sure if he ever got psychological help. I used to come and just sit with him time and again, you know, so we can talk a little bit, you know, just to give him a little, you know, shoulder to lean on, you know, we can we used to sit down and talk for a little while. Mm -hmm. But even when things were being shared in the community, and I'm, I'm not complaining the fact that I probably never really got, got nothing from what the government gave, you know, or so. But as I always say, there are always persons who need it more than me because I had families, I had friends overseas. I, the, the, maybe a few days after the hurricane, I heard from one friend of mine. And um, when we did get a little text message, she said, all I want to know is that you're okay because I have people calling me, asking me, how are you, how are you? So I said to her, I am all right, I am all right. I'm not sure about my apartment and everything else, but I am okay. And right away, they were putting things together for me, you know? So I was never lacking anything, mm -hmm. you know? But when I saw what was going on in my community, it was really heartbreaking. Because as I said, it took me 21 days to come and visit my aunt, 21 days. And when I came, mm -hmm. And we, I imagine I was just up Tranquility Estate. Oh, I came down. Mm -hmm. I came down. I could not cross. And it took me three weeks to actually come to oh. find out what was happening. You know? And then they started telling me. And in all what they said to me, I think I was more crying than, you know, but just thankful that everybody was okay. Your aunt then just down there? Mm hmm. Go down south? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you were more on the other side? Or the yes. Is there any kind of part, parting message, anything you wanted to say? Mm -hmm. um, before we go in the last couple of minutes, you don't have to, you know, but yeah. it's just if anything comes to mind. You see, Dominica, Dominica, well, we know God created the earth. The earth is just going to be there. The earth can replenish itself. Humans, we are not able to replenish ourselves, to give ourselves life. And just in case. Um, we may lose an arm and a, and a leg. We may not be able to grow it back like a tree would lose a branch and grow back the branch. But what we can see, there's always strength in devastation. Um, there's also unity in devastation because we saw how much we in Lubia suffered. We lost lives, over 11 lives were lost. We, I can say we were marginalized in the sense that um, even when the Duke of Edinburgh came down, Lubier, we suffered so much, and they did not um, acknowledge Lubier. They went in other communities, and um, some of us were very frustrated over that. Um, we saw certain things that were supposed to happen. We did not, you know, probably enjoy some of the good times that came. But in all of that, that did not deter us. We were determined to bounce back, and we saw majority of us are still here. Some may have mig migrated, but majority of us are still here, building back Lubier building back our community hoping that things will develop for us as i said in terms of our playing field we know that is our number one because um all our village activities used to take place on that playing field and that is one of my heart's desire to see that our playing field come back better than it used to be and that our people can always come together in any form of adversity really.